is, is why we do all the work we do. everybody welcome back um today is going to be a little bit of a update video uh rather than us working on a single problem um so basically we're going to look at we're going to close out the clutch issue we're going to look at the steering issue uh exhaust um and then uh look at some fun stuff like uh some new 3d prints new printer um and some uh, scanning uh, to get some of the prints to fit really nicely. So uh, let's go take a look. So we're gonna start here with the uh, clutch uh, slave cylinder. Uh, remember, uh, we were trying to bleed out all the air. We replaced um, the line with a single line um, and then uh, routed it, got it into place here and um, basically eliminating any uh, junctions or joints and um, bled this out and we got basically all the air out of the system now the other problem was is that the clutch still was um, not engaging uh, the way I would like it and it's because we had some slop here so I put in an adjustable uh, arm in here remember i was talking about how thin the other one was and it was potentially moving uh in in uh, rotating it this way instead of just going straight in so we got a heavier duty uh adjustable arm put that in and that seems to have uh got it a little bit better but that's not the full story so the other problem has to do with the pedal, which is right here. And the pedal had a huge amount of travel before it actually started engaging the cylinder. And so I was able to take out all of that play and now I get an absolutely amazing clutch. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. You can actually feel the clutch engaging and disengaging. So that was uh, a big find. Uh, making sure that we got the adjustment right. So I'm actually using part of the frame as the stop for the clutch pedal, which I may at the end of the day put some sort of bumper in here so that we don't have this clanking when you let off the clutch like that. So, so that's the good news. Now let's go to this guy here, which is our steering issue. And in order to get the clutch and the brake and all of that situated so it was a comfortable in the cabin and also the actuators were all linear so that I got a good you know uh, brake pedal and everything that kind of fixed the position of of this uh, brake pedal uh, system here and um, that meant there was a challenge for the steering column now the steering column in these cars is actually comes out uh, differently than it does in say like my earlier project, my 69 Mustang, where the column would actually come down at a quite severe angle. These come almost straight out. Um, so that does present a problem getting down to a, a steering rack. So basically you've got this thing coming straight out. I did have it at a high angle before and it just looked really stupid and it just didn't fit the interior and so I had to put it in the way that it was meant to go in. So we did that and that just presented a problem of getting all the way down to the rack which is there. So let's talk about the rack first before we get into uh, the column and uh, how we had to route. 
So this is the old rack, and I got this as an eBay special. Um, sometimes eBay is great, sometimes not so great. Um, in this case, it was not so great because um, I had steering fluid leaking out of the seal here. And that wouldn't have been too big of a problem because we could just replace that seal. However, the issue is, is that when this rack goes back and forth, there's like a dead spot in it or a lumpy spot. And so it didn't move very smoothly at all. And so um, that led me to think that it was coming from the steering U-joints uh, uh, coming down from the steering column, but that was not the case. It was actually uh, this here. Now, there was a little bit of lumpiness in the U-joints, uh, but it was different than the lumpiness I had in this, this uh, steering rack. So I went ahead and purchased a new steering rack. Um, these aren't cheap, so I did have to blow a little few bucks on that uh, to get a proper steering rack uh, from Speedway Motors. Now that's the one that's in here. And if I move the wheels, this thing just moves like fluidly, okay? No lumpiness, lock to lock, it moves great. So I'm just hoping that it doesn't leak. <laughs> Because I hate leaks. They're such a pain to fix. Um, so getting back to the universal joints. Um, again, you can see we have one, two here. And that leads us down to here. Now, I have uh, taken the steering wheel off so the clock spring is not moving. Because I know that if you're moving this around willy-nilly and your clock spring uh, is engaged, you could actually tear it or break it. And what I've done is I've put in two uh, heim joints here and here to really uh, pin down this collar. And then I've had to make sure I had clearance with the uh, suspension, which is really tight. So hopefully we won't see any interference there, but we'll know pretty quickly if we do. <laughs> um, at any rate, this moves nice and smooth, um, no binding. Uh, so now we have to get it from here down to the rack there. So I'll have two more U-joints that'll go there. Now I had five before, this will cut it down to four, so we'll actually get rid of one of the universal joints. But I think this is the best I can do. I mean, I can get one of those kind of 90 degree geared um, steering things uh, that I found online, but they want $900 for those things, which is just insane. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna try this. I'm going to see how comfortable I feel with it, make sure it's uh, robust, <clears throat> and then hopefully that'll sort out the steering. But you guys let me know in the comments what you think, um, if there's any other solutions that uh, potentially uh, could work here that are not absolutely cost prohibitive. Um, so, but yeah, right now this is working pretty nicely. So. So the other one was the exhaust tips um, at the show. I actually just had these sitting in there because as I showed you before, the um, exhaust was actually not coming down far enough for these tips. Um, so what I did yesterday as I came in, and we'll try to show you a little bit of what's going on. Um, I actually had to uh, angle the cats down a little bit. So I cut into um, the cat upstream and cut out a wedge and then welded a new wedge in there to make them come down so that they could go into the tips. Now, at this point, the welding sucks. Um, so I'm aware of that. I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments, but um, <coughs> my intent <coughs> is to take this all apart uh, once I'm done and uh, redo everything and TIG weld the whole thing uh, together and I might actually get some new exhaust tips or some new way of displaying the exhaust tips out the back So another big shout out to Creality of course who de facto sponsors uh, the channel because they've sent me a lot of uh, the new equipment that I'm using the scanner uh, Which you can get a discount on uh, which I put down in the description and then they sent me this uh, K1 Max, um, 
which is a nice enclosed printer. Now you, you remember they sent me the, the CRM4 and that one works great. The issue is, is that um, I need a enclosed system to print the ASA that I do for the parts. And so Creality was gracious enough to uh, send me one of these K1 Maxes. I'm not gonna do a review on it. I'm gonna let other YouTubers like uh, Joel, uh, 3D Printing Nerd, uh, do reviews on printers and stuff like that. He does comprehensive uh, reviews, he's not paid, and so you can trust um, any of the reviews that Joel does on his channel. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can uh, follow him. So one of the things that I've noticed about this printer, which is absolutely fantastic, it has a couple of really good features that I'll go over real quick. The first one is, is that it has a Bowden tube that goes up to the head, which I really like. Um, it also keeps the spool from uh, kind of unraveling, which I had an uh, issue with my other printer, where I'd actually have to put uh, something down to hold down the uh, 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 filament so that it wouldn't uh, unspool and then get tangled and then lock up the uh, printer. So that's really nice. It has a uh, um, feature for uh, filament runout. Um, so I'm going to see how that works today because I have a print going and I don't have enough filament. So I want to see how it handles uh, that kind of uh, failure. Um, in addition, the printing has been absolutely amazing. It's at least three times faster than the other printer. So I'm really happy with this printer. Um, and we've been doing a lot of printing. So let's, let's go see what we've been doing. So this is what I've been printing. Um, so uh, you'll see, um, let's go... Uh, cut to uh, how we actually designed this. Um, we'll go look at what we actually came up with the scanner and then we'll come back and we'll uh, take a look at the fitment after printing out everything on the K1 Max. So now we're back here out on the car and what this was for was a front splitter and so um, I wanted something to kind of finish off the front end of the car have a little bit of a carbon fiber splitter and so that's what we're printing out here and can you guys believe that fitment so this is actually a recess that I put in here to follow the panel lines and look at that fitment it's just amazing. So that scanner is going to really change the game for you guys wanting to use 3D printing for modifying your cars. Because this way, as I told you before, I've had to gone over iteration after iteration after iteration just taking measurements and trying to get things to fit perfectly. Because even after these panels are done, um, you go through the process of uh, skinning them and or encapsulating them or whatever their dimensions are going to change some and then also when you're trying to work out you know uh, imperfections and stuff and doing all the body work you end up with a different profile um, and look at that look at that fitment I mean that is absolutely amazing you can see here that this goes down so that it you know makes a nice edge against here goes all the way around 
fits all of this perfectly and then up into here and then we've got um, the the uh, front here now this is pointing down a little bit because what I did on this is because I had a hard time trying to get up under here with the scanner is I made this so that I can cut it off and get the level that I want uh, for uh, where this sits um, obviously it's pointing down a little bit but that's okay so that's why I have the clamps on it right now so this will get marked and cut and then uh, we'll take a look at the fitment so now that we've cut that down I have a little bit of shaping to do but um, it's just about right it has to go up probably a quarter of an inch um, but again that was the adjustable part of this whole front splitter um, so I think that is just gonna look amazing um, but we'll get this all done and set up and then uh, I'll show you guys how wonderful the fitment is is uh, when we have it all finished but yeah I'm really really happy with this we also did a benchy on this and so I'm going to show you the time lapse here and that was incredible right that was 15 minutes to do that benchy and the quality was very very good and one of the reasons that that one can go so fast is because they've come out with this uh, hyper series or hyper pla i guess it's slicker or something <laughs> not really sure but um this allowed that print to move at an absolutely ridiculous rate it was like six times faster than anything i've ever seen um, so anyway, go, go to their website, Corality.com, and check out some of their products. So, um, we're going to take care of uh, most of the mechanicals. Um, again, the steering is uh, uh, next. Um, and once we get that all sorted out, I should be able to do a video um, going up and down the street here. Um, and with the engine running better and all of those types of things, I think uh, the next video should be pretty uh, awesome. Um, so anyway, until I get my new universal joints in, we'll have to wait, um, but hopefully they'll be in this week and I can get them installed and get everything sorted out before uh, the next video uh, this week. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, again, don't forget to check the links for uh, some discounts on uh, Creality products. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.